How to Survive Rejection and Failure. So before I start rambling on, um, I'm going to be showing time-lapse footage of me coloring last week's line art so you get to see me make the big bad wolf all nice and shiny. I'm using blue because um, I think that contrasts well with the red um, that I'm going to be using for Red Rider and uh, here we go. Lately I've been feeling kind of bad about my career and where I'm going as an independent artist. I feel like I'm just kind of spinning wheels and running around doing the same stuff and not not really getting not really getting further. Um, I've been throwing a lot of things at the wall, as they say, as the saying goes, and none of it has been sticking. <laughs> I've written a couple of proposals, I've thrown pitches out there, and I've been receiving nothing but rejections or denials or just you know it, nothing is working out. It seems, and it can get really disheartening and really frustrating when you're, you're putting your heart out there and you're putting your soul out there and, and nothing's coming back. I can have all the confidence in the world in what I'm doing and my ideas and my work, but if it isn't landing and if it isn't getting picked up somehow, you can really start to feel like you're, you're going nowhere and, and your work isn't worth it. And those are always dangerous thoughts. Uh, those are always thoughts that can really hinder your progress and what you want to do. And so uh, I've been thinking a lot about how to deal with this type of uh, rejection or seeming failure. You know, here I am known as Mr. Fucking Do It amongst my circle of friends and I'm feeling like I can't, you know? I'm feeling like I try, I try, I try, and I, it, it just, it's not working out, you know? Um, it's funny because like whenever my friends feel this way or people that I encounter feel this way, I'm always there, you know, yelling in their face, you know, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Just bury yourself in the work. Get out there and just keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. If you really believe in what you're doing at some point, it's going to happen for you. And though I honestly do believe that to be true, uh, sometimes it can be hard to remind myself that uh, just keeping on the grind is the way to go. So with that in mind, I've come up with a, a list. I like doing things in lists, and my lists are always small because I can't count. Uh, so I have a list of uh, three things you can do to sort of get over these feelings of despair and failure. Step one, take a break. Step two, make sure you have a number of different projects to work on at the same time, so in case something falls through, you have something else to work on. And step three, learn something new. All right, so let's start with step one, taking a break. When you have your nose to the grindstone and you're working and you're doing stuff and you're trying to get things accomplished, you can get tunnel visioned. And if anything throws you off that track, it can be kind of jarring and, and, and emotionally disturbing. So sometimes it helps to just take a break and walk away and put down your crayons and put down that Wacom and put down your drawing pad and just step away from what you're doing and go do something else. I find that eating food is helpful, um, but if that's not going to be enough, maybe, you know, fire up Monster Hunter and finally defeat Anjananth because you've hit that brick wall early in your campaign or go see a movie or just take a walk. Do something to snap yourself out of your tunnel vision because it's not helpful to dwell on what you perceive as a failure or a roadblock. Sometimes you just need to get out of your headspace and do something else. Do something completely unrelated. Um, sometimes if I'm feeling really shitty and really tunneled in, I'll go to the climbing gym and fail on a couple of problems, but it's, it's nice because it's physical activity and Climbing is great because either you get up the wall or you don't. There's no mystery, you know. There are no hidden standards that you haven't met. There's no feelings about it. Oh my gosh, there's no gatekeepers when you're at the climbing gym. You either get up the wall or you don't. And the reason why you don't is because you haven't practiced enough, you know. I have a whole other rant about climbing and why it's so awesome, but I'll just leave that for another day. But do something completely unrelated to artwork. 
and I'm talking about artwork in specific, but this could be useful for whatever you're doing. Like if you're if you're coding or if you're, I don't know, if you're teaching, do something else. Do something else for for like for a day or a couple days or maybe a week. But just just step away, put the pencils down, put the markers down, and and do something else. Let your brain focus on something else. So that when you come back to your project, you'll be refreshed and you can attack it with new eyes, which is always very, very helpful, especially in art. Number two, have multiple projects going at the same time. Now the danger here is loading up on too many things so that you get lost in the weeds and you just feel overwhelmed. But having two or three projects going on at the same time is a pretty good idea. If one falls through, you have two others to work on. If all three fall through, and go back to step one, which is kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, but having having multiple different things to work on is nice because if you ever feel like you're you're getting stuck in one area, but you still feel like you need to keep working, you can just hop on to this other project and keep that going. You know, if you if you have a print that you're trying to get done for a convention and it's really pissing you off and you're getting stuck, maybe you have. Um, a personal the character design that you want to work on so you you know you leave that print for the convention for a couple hours and you work on your character design your original character and all that kind of stuff or maybe you have a comic that you want to you know lay out and all that kind of thing so if you have a couple of these different projects going on at the same time it can benefit you if you ever get stuck in one now hopefully one one or two of those projects do not have an attached deadline to it Working on multiple deadlines at the same time, that's a, a real easy way to burn yourself out and make yourself go crazy. So um, have multiple projects, but also ensure that one out of the three or two out of the three do not have a deadline. These are things that you can just relax with and chill with and just explore and, and, and try weird stuff and do new things. Uh, which brings me to step three, learn something new. I find that if I'm ever feeling stagnated or if I'm feeling in a rut, if I can learn something new about a process, whether it's 3D sculpting or topology or digital painting or animation or anything like that, if I'm learning something new, if I'm learning a new process, I feel pretty good. I feel like I'm adding to my toolkit, my skill set that I can uh, that I can unleash on my next project and do something really amazing. So learn something new, whether that means just going on YouTube and picking up a couple of tutorials from other people that are out there, or buying a Gumroad course from one of your favorite artists, because a lot of digital artists have Gumroad resources and tutorials and videos that you can purchase from them. If it's more formalized, like if you take a no moan course or if you're if you go to the local college and and pick up a course there learning something new is always fun learning new things as an artist is always fun it helps you break out of old habits and maybe pick up some new habits that could be beneficial helps you see things from a different perspective it challenges you to use different parts of your brain meats when you're making a thing which then you can take and bring it back to your other workflows uh, it's just great great stuff all around learning new stuff is always fun and there are so many resources out there that you can use to to learn something new so there you have it three strategies to help you deal with crushing defeat step one take a break step two have multiple projects going on at the same time hopefully without a deadline on at least one or two of them and then step three learn some new stuff because learning is awesome if you have other ways of dealing with rejection and just outright failure, please let me know wherever you see this in the comments or suggestions or ads or whatever. Uh, I'd love to hear them from you. Uh, it's something I'm struggling with uh, a lot lately and uh, these three are, are good, but you know, I will always add more steps if I feel like they'll be helpful for me. Hope you enjoyed the coloring. Um, if you wanna see a more detailed version of that coloring stuff, uh, please let me know. I, otherwise, I'll just, you know, throw up these quick time lapses when it comes to the coloring phase of this process. Next time, I'm gonna show you the design phase of Red Rider. Uh, it's uh, similar to what I did with the wolf, except common Rider style. And uh, yeah, all right, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'll check you later, bye. <laughs>